Do you know how Trump supporters are acting after this interview? A quarter of registered voters still say they don't know you. They don't know what makes you tick. And, and why do you think that is? What, what's the disconnect? It's an election bill. Ladies and gentlemen, this is getting embarrassing for the Democrats. And I... Some of the media outlets are starting to play fair, and it's not going well for the Democrats. I mean, from Kamala, is she starting to look worse than Biden? Take um, it seriously. If they start playing fair, this is done. Then I have to earn everyone's vote. This is an election for president of the United States. No one should be able to take for granted that they can just declare themselves a candidate and automatically receive support. You have to earn it. Which is basically playing into the man's hands because she didn't earn it. But was democracy best served by President Biden stepping down and basically handing you a nomination? You didn't have to go through a primary process. You didn't have to fight off other contenders. That's not really the way our system was intended to work. President Biden made a decision that I think history is going to show is rare among leaders which was to put country before self. And I am proud to have earned the support of the vast majority of delegates and to have been elected the Democratic nominee. I am proud to have received the endorsement of leaders around this country from every background and walk of life. So right there alone, isn't that what he's basically saying? He, the people never voted you here. You're not here because of the people. You're here because of, and she's like literally saying, yeah, I'm here because of the hierarchies and, and the, those elites and the, the, the leaders and, and the, the ones up on the pedestals. They put me here. The great ones can put me here. I don't need those little minions out there. I don't need the people out there to vote for me or to decide that there's a better candidate than me. That's basically what she's saying to the Democrat voters. We, I don't need you to tell me that I'm the best one for you. I, I, we know, we, we know this for you. We, we can think for you. I mean, isn't it? I mean, I think it's precisely exactly that. What the gentleman is asking her in the interview is like, is, is this normal? Is this how you do it? To fight in this election over the next month for our democracy. But I think this truncated process is why people think or say they don't really know who you are. Look, I've been in this race for 70 days. Her own media, her greatest allies in media are no longer pandering to her. Ladies and gentlemen, you've got to see this. You've got to watch this. This is so telling of, I think they know what's actually gonna happen already in November. They're just getting prepared for the next uh, <laughs> slew of marketers. So grab a drink and let me know what you think. Let me tell you what your critics and the columnists say. Okay. They say that the reason so many voters don't know you is that you have changed your position on so many things. You were against fracking, now you're for it. You supported looser immigration policies. Now you're tightening them up. You were for Medicare for all. Now you're not. So many that people don't truly know what you believe or what you stand for. And I know you've heard that. In the last four years, I have been vice president of the United States. That's exactly the point, Kamala. You've been vice president for three and a half years. People should know who you are, but they thought you were against fracking. They thought you were against tightening in restrictions to let illegal immigrants in. And for the last three and a half years, everything you've done has been horrible. It's been horribly bad. And they think that now that you're changing your mind on everything, you're somebody else who's gonna do something good. <laughs> I don't know about that. I've been covering the border for for years, and so I know this is not a problem that started with your administration. Correct, correct. But there was an historic flood of undocumented immigrants coming across the border the first three years of your administration. As a matter of fact, arrivals quadrupled. Was it a mistake to loosen the immigration policies as much as you did. It's a long-standing problem. What I was asking was, was it a mistake in the first place? I think 
Okay. But, but the, the numbers the, did quadruple. And of illegal immigration by half. But should you we have, have done cut that? the should flow of fentanyl. That? He's throwing hardballs at her, ladies and gentlemen. This is not normal for CBS to be doing this with a Democrat candidate. Usually it's softball. Usually it's here, give you some easy, make, make sure you hit them out of the park for your, for our base. But man, this is different. Yeah, we've cut the immigration in half from your quadruple, not from the Trump era. You didn't cut it from in half from that. That was letting hardly anybody in. You didn't cut that in half. You, after you quadrupled it, then you cut it in half. So you really, it's doubled since you first started. Still, it's looking really bad. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let me know. A quarter of registered voters still say they don't know you. They don't know what makes you tick. And, and why do you think that is? What, what's the disconnect? It's an election bill. And I take um, it seriously that I have to earn everyone's vote. This is an election for president of the United States. No one should be able to take for granted that they can just declare themselves a candidate and automatically receive support. You have to earn it. And that's what I intend to do. Was democracy best served? by President Biden stepping down and basically handing you a nomination. You didn't have to go through a primary process. You didn't have to fight off other contenders. That's not really the way our system was intended to work. President Biden made a decision that I think history is gonna show is- Unheard of? I think history is gonna show is rare among leaders which was to put country before self. And I am proud to have earned the support of the vast majority of delegates and to have been elected the Democratic nominee. I am proud to have received the endorsement of leaders around this country from every background and walk of life to fight in this election over the next month for our democracy. But I think this truncated process is why people think or say they don't really know who you are. Look, I've been in this race for 70 days. I think she's in trouble. I think she's in trouble and I think she knows it. And the gentleman that interviewed her also interviewed this guy and that didn't go well. In your debate with J.D. Vance, you said, I'm a knucklehead at times. And I think you were referring to the time that you said that you were in Hong Kong during the Tiananmen Square unrest when you were not. Yeah. That is more than misrepresentation. That is a bold outlier. You said you were in Tiananmen Square at the time, in 89. That was the big movement. That's like saying I was in the, I was in New York when the walls collapsed. I was right by the building. That's like saying I was in the most, one of the most historic places at the time when, when communists was being destroyed in Tiananmen Square and there was a big revolt against the government and I was there as if you were saying I was protesting. That was not to say that and then end up being, oh, I went there to learn about their culture. It, it, <laughs> that was, come on. That's just blatant lying misleading. That's lying. The Tiananmen Square unrest when you were not. Yeah. Is that kind of misrepresentation isn't that more than just being a knucklehead? I think folks know who I am, and I think they know the difference between someone expressing emotion, telling a story, getting a date wrong, uh, by a, you know, rather than a pathological liar like Donald Trump. But I think it comes down to the question of whether, whether you can be trusted to tell the truth. Yeah, well, I can. I think I can. What is this, the little train that could? I think I can, I think I can. Well, well, did anybody believe that? Anybody believe, well, can you be trusted? The guy asked him, can you be trusted? And he's like, well, well yeah, I, I, I think I can. I, I, didn't that feel weird to you? <laughs> Do you trust him? Whether you can be trusted to tell the truth. Yeah, well, I can, I think I can. I will own up to being a knucklehead at times, but the folks closest to me know that I keep my word. Oh, the folks that are closest to you know that you keep your word. Well, that's that's great. I'm sure you're you're not lying, but if I could just get their number, just so I can call them, at, not that I don't trust you, 
just get so I can get their number and maybe just do a little fact checking here. <laughs> So can you feel the shift in the air tonight, ladies and gentlemen? Can you feel it? It's different. There's a different vibe out there with the media, the way they're treating the Democrats. I know that they still get pandered to on a few stations here and there, but to see CBS and CNN taking their liberty, of course, they're hitting the Republicans hard too. I understand that. They always have. The Republicans are used to it, but they never, ever took this route with the Democratic Party. And now Kamala Harris is feeling the brunt of it, and I can see that I can feel a change in the atmosphere as far as the viewers that, are, that watch those channels are starting to turn away saying, okay, can you give us something more real? Can you give us the tr truth? Of, and they're calling out CBS. They're calling out their ABC if they're watching that. They're calling out their MSNBC, uh, their, their news. They're calling them out loud and clear saying, you guys need to be straight up with us. You guys have not been straight up with us. And now that you are being straight up with us, we're kind of looking looking towards Trump. Trump, we're, we trust him a little bit more. We know what he can do. We've seen him do it. And now we're seeing the vibe, the momentum, and, and what would never have been talked about four years ago uh, is being literally talked about as far as people coming out and saying, yeah, I support Trump. It's no longer like this negative thing. It's more of a, a positive atmosphere for all people, which is the way it's, it should be in the way I think it should be anyway. Anyway, get it, ladies and gentlemen, getting ready for the hurricane over here in Tampa. Uh, I would just want to say blessings to all of those that are out there watching. If you're in harm's way, please get out of harm's way. Our prayers are with you so you're safe and protected by the blood of the Lamb. We put that blood over our door and protect all those houses out there. We, Lord, we cover those homes out there that are getting ready to see Milton come their way. We cover their, their blood with, the, with the, their house with the blood of the Lamb right now protect them and keep them safe. In Jesus name, I want to say thank you all for watching. Appreciate you. And hopefully we will see you on the next one soon. Have a blessed day.